Hello and welcome to my channel. <coughs> well, the mowers are out today. <coughs> um, the other day, I mean, it's been raining here a lot, and I cut some leather with my SE4 with S35VN in it, and. Uh, Yesterday I checked the uh, knife and the SE4 had some rust on it. And that was surface rust. And it looked like it was just water droplets had dried out. But it was brown. Uh, it was beginning to, to rust. And I, I, you know, S35 VN, stainless steel, right? You would think rust proof. They used to even call it stuff rost free you know or something like that and uh it isn't <laughs> it isn't 100 percent rust proof um so you got to be aware of stuff like that it it came off fairly easy i just took a rust eraser and ran it over it and everything but after doing that i checked my se6 again and it was okay that's what I'm carrying with me. But, uh, I put some mineral oil on it. Uh, because we've been having a lot of rain here lately. And that's why they call it a preventative. It's better to prevent rust than get rust. But, Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, you know, I lived in New Mexico for like 12 years, and you just don't realize what, how advantageous low humidity is for metal until you move from New Mexico to Texas, North Texas. Now, yeah, we got all this greenery. Right? But with it comes bugs. <laughs> and uh, last night I even had to break out a mosquito net inside the house. Because I don't know how they get it. Well, I, I figured out how they're getting in. Uh, there's a... <clears throat> whenever I open my front door, there's got to be mosquitoes that are hiding on the front just waiting. <laughs> and when I close it, they come in. But... <clears throat> They wait until you're getting ready to go to sleep. And only female mosquitoes bite. And they make that high-pitched whine. And I heard it and I slapped myself right in the ear. <laughs> right in the eardrum. <clears throat> so I've got a GI mosquito net for a cot. And it's not, I don't have a cot attached to it, but I pulled that out. And I put it over my head. And just as I was doing that, I heard the mosquito come up. And uh, I caught him in the net, and, or her in the net, and killed her. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of windy. So, you know, I can get some wind noise from this. But... Different environments have different requirements. You know, if you were you were going out and you forgot any mosquito repellent, or you didn't have any insect nets or anything, man, it can make a big difference in your enjoyment. If you're out camping or doing whatever. Oh, there's another mattress out there. But, yeah. Rust, bugs, insects. Yeah, the desert environment has different kind of insects and different advantages and disadvantages, everything, I guess. Anyway.
gonna get loud. Go loud. But yeah, this, that rain fed this grass, this, this edge here. I mean, this guy says is Bermuda. Bermuda grass on this. What the other stuff is that they laid down but and they're gonna see they've got a combination lock type thing they're gonna put that on this they're gonna reinforce this area down here because it's rotted out and they're right now they just got a you know combination padlock up there but they're gonna put an electrical one on there because this is not a public pool but the public can walk up on it and you know how that goes a lot of people don't read signs and even if they do read signs they don't think it applies to them <laughs> pool residents only like, nah. I know a pool resident. No, that's not the same. <sighs> so Shadow's been fed, Buddy's been fed, Mama Cat's been fed. A shadow right there. You better hide, shadow. The mowers are coming. Heck, I don't know if you can see him, but he's way down there. Look at the ears sticking up. He's funny. He walked. <laughs> he walked with me. Um, Normally cats give up after following a person. They're, they're usually not like a dog that'll trail you, but man, he walked right beside me. He was gonna walk right beside me for the whole loop. <clears throat> but I stopped to talk to the maintenance guy. And uh, the maintenance guy, I think, doesn't like cats. He likes dogs, but he don't like cats. And, uh, animals know so he didn't get close to the maintenance guy while I was talking to him but when I walked off there was Shadow following me he's a funny cat he uh I got that big screen TV up there and uh, he was watching it yesterday a little bit I had on a western and some horses were going around and I got somebody, there were some buzzards circling and he was interested in that, looking at it and he looked back at me I said, yeah, it's called a TV, <laughs> stray cat TV, put one out on your porch and run nature channels or something, give them entertainment. But. <clears throat> Isolated. You didn't have a lot of issues to come with low income housing. Unfortunately, I don't know if it, I, I didn't mention any race, you know, because everybody can be low income. But uh, with, with those situations, usually comes broken homes and stuff like that. And so there's not a lot of guidance a lot of times. Um, so the kids will do stuff. Like there's more vandalism occurring here now. We never used to have, I don't say never, but it was very rare. I don't know if you're gonna even be able to hear me with all this. I gotta get my walking in. Gotta get it done before the sun. Completely up here. 
here and start baking. Bacon and eggs. Because we're in a we're in an extreme heat situation where it's only going to be in the upper 90s, but you add in the humidity and you run into extreme heat and that'll drop you. Let's see what's propping this up. Oh, that old, <laughs> I've already salvaged most of the leather. A lot of times the side is not real leather, but this one is, it's just... Anyways, that's where the moisture came from. I'd cut off this piece and it was already wet. And I, I thought I wiped the blade off, but I might not have, but I'm gonna learn my lesson on that. <clears throat> Never put your blade up wet. It's just like riding a horse. Rode hard and put up wet. Not a good thing. <clears throat> just like a, a knife, just like a horse. You treat it right, it's gonna treat you right. You treat it wrong, don't be surprised if it fails on you. It's not the nice fault, it's your fault. <clears throat> Pool guests must be accompanied by a resident. See, it used to be you could just hang out on your balcony and watch a guest, uh, but now you gotta be in there with them. Uh, a former co-worker came by the other day and he was asking about the pool and I told him, yeah, man, they, they need like little wristbands and they've got pool monitors and stuff like that. So they're trying to crack down on it. <clears throat> Me, <clears throat> I've never once gone in that pool. There's Baxter. <laughs> Buddy beat up Baxter a little while ago. <clears throat> he was taking out his frustrations on somebody he, Baxter, he's a nice cat. <clears throat> he's cautious, he's stray. A lot of them, like I said, come from, they come from over here. You know, that they, they came from one of these individual houses. So. I do as much as I can for the stray animals. Uh, the situation isn't quite as bad, but I mean, it, it was getting wild there for a little while. All right, I'm gonna take a shortcut. Yeah, this is the underground transformers. That has a WB lock on it, padlock. Wilson Bohannon, I think is what it was. Those are cool locks. I might try to pick one. I haven't picked in a long time. Uh, I found a Ruko 500 lock that I when I was in the lock picking, a guy made up for me and sent to me from overseas. And I've never been able to get that sucker open. Even with the key, you have to jiggle it just right to get it to open. So I probably picked it open before, but just didn't push the cylinder around as much. Noisy, noisy. Oh, he's behind me. I don't want to get run over. I'm gonna go up front. Maybe where it's a little less noisy. Uh, 
Yeah, when, when you're into lock sport and stuff, they make these things called challenge locks. And normal locks and locksmiths and everything have to follow a certain standard. You know, like one pin can't be this much lower than the next pin <coughs> uh, because it leads to function problems, you know. <coughs> it's not as easy to open and close and you're just going to get service calls and stuff like that. So they have industry standards. Well, <coughs> lock pickers don't have any standards other than it's a challenge. In a challenge lock, you put everything you can in there, everything you can think of to make it difficult to pick. <coughs> and that doesn't always equal functionality as far as like you would have this on your front door or anything. <laughs> because I've used things like uh, the, the chain you find on a bathtub and stuff. I put that in there as a as a driver pin, not a key pin, a driver pin. And so it acts like a spool, <clears throat> but it has that little wire. And eventually it snaps, you know, because people trying to pick it, <clears throat> one ball will fall down with the chain attached, and they'll try to turn, and if you turn hard enough, you know, it's a ball chain, it'll break. And a, a lock is a lot like a shear, like scissors and everything. Um, two opposing close together pieces it'll cut that metal but anyways one of these days I'll pick that one open and see what he put inside because I haven't disassembled it uh, and now that I've got those action camera I can pick for a longer time now look at that I gave him some water earlier that's shadow drinking water from a puddle. I think that shadow it looks black. Might not be. Yeah, that shadow. I can tell from all the way back here. <clears throat> if a cat likes it, they'll raise their tail when they see you. He's suspicious. I mean, they have to be. You don't know what strangers. Not all humans are alike, as we know. <laughs> some like cats, some hate cats. And black cats have got a special stigma because there's a lot of superstition. I'll write BS about black cats. They're no different than any other color cat, but they really got to watch it on Halloween. A lot of people are superstitious. There's Baxter hiding underneath the Mustang. I saw him. Yeah. Animals don't understand machine noise a lot of times now. You know, like a vacuum cleaner. You turn on a vacuum cleaner. It'll, if you have a dog, they'll try to attack it. If you have a cat, usually they'll try to run away. Uh, Lawnmower is the same thing, man. It makes a lot of noise. Weed eaters and stuff. I've had Buddy chilling out in his bunker, being fine, and then a guy with a weed eater comes by, or edge trimmer, make a lot of noise, and then he wanted to <laughs> off the balcony. Like, Get me out of here. There's a, a, a vaporizer thing. Um, I take these things because there's a battery in here. There's a battery in these things that you can reuse. You can use it for small lights and stuff like that. And it comes with a charge circuit right there. You just disassemble this stuff. You don't have to worry about putting it back together. You just take it apart. But. Yeah, I look for things like that. Because disposables doesn't mean throw on the ground. <laughs> and if you look at a lot of uh, any electronics that's got batteries in it, it says, don't throw it in the trash. Well, you know what? 
most people are going to throw it in the trash or on the ground because they don't have any options. You give them a choice, like a recycling bin or something for electronics, and they could reuse it, but... Anyway, we're not going to solve the world's problems today. I don't mean this guy's here. That's his little shop back there. It's getting a little warm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my walking in stages today. I try to get two miles every day. I bumped that up from just one mile because I've got this little fitness app that comes with the Samsung phone and it says people in my age walk more than I do. I'm like, what? <laughs> I have not seen people 67 years old walking. You don't see a lot of them even walking. Got a cane or a wheelchair. But, anywho, and my next door neighbor's moving out. You never know who your neighbors are gonna be. This guy was only here a couple of months. And now he's splitting. And he's right across the door from me. Whew. It's free electricity weekend, so I'm going to make use of that air conditioner today. So yeah, it had a little bit of rust uh, spread out, you know, like a, a splotch here, here, and here on this side. And a little bit on this side, too. I okay, That's still part of it. It didn't eat into the metal. Or anything you know but a lot of times when people go for something like a stainless steel they think ah, I don't have to oil it I don't have to do anything with it I can put it up wet it won't rust wrong <laughs> uh, you may get away with that a few times but uh, not here in Texas <laughs> uh, but yeah anyways it, it came off easily you know like it says um, Rust eraser, one of those little, uh, just like an eraser, really. It's just probably got a little bit more abrasive to it. But, yeah, I uh, I put mineral oil on my, on my SE6. And I also put it on my 3. Because this coating does a very good job of protecting... That's why I left that on the handle. I'm protecting that 1095. But when you take it off, even with, I had, uh, you know, on this one I had patinaed it in vinegar. I mean, I had a, a little bit, but, you know, even bluing, if you put it on there, cold bluing and stuff, uh, is not, it, it's just, it helps it a little bit. <laughs> it helps it a little bit is basically it. But I mean, I mean a little, you know, because... You can still get, you can still get rust. So, just want to add that, you know, just a part of it. Thanks for watching, and have a nice day.